Chapter 15. That was all on a Thursday. For some reason which they did not understand, Madison was anxious to know which Thursday in November it was. He seemed satisfied when they told him it was the first one. When he reached his office on the Friday, Mr. Holdsworth rang the police to inquire if anything further had been heard of the thief who had broken into his house and was told that a character called Silver Ware had indeed been found to be in possession of a quantity of stolen valuables and had been arrested. He might well have been your man, sir, said the police officer. We've recently had information that led us to a couple of other villains. The same information, strangely enough, that we had some while back. Though we disregarded it then as it came from an American joker. Joker? Said he'd been kidnapped, was going to escape up a chimney, and to top it all, was only nine inches tall. He must have been mad, said Mr Holdsworth solemnly. He also made a call to the local authority to trace the address of one of the dustmen, a Mr Claude Clutterbuck, and then sent him anonymously the reward he'd had in mind of £50. Handsome indeed, said Madison in Claude's voice when he heard about this. He'll heat his other hat. On Saturday, they had a family game of Monopoly. Madison's battleship was in unbeatable form, collecting no less than three good sets, including, of course, the red one, and bankrupting them all. On Sunday, there was no crossword for Mr Holdsworth and Madison. Oh, no, on Sunday, there was the crossword for Mr Holdsworth and Madison to enjoy. And on Monday, when the second half of term began, Harry went back to school with a light heart, looking forward to the evening's homework. As for Harry's mother, she was very keen on the idea of a special meal, a feast in honour of Madison's homecoming, but he said he would rather wait a while. When would you like it then, she asked. If it's all the same to you, ma'am, said Madison, how about the fourth Thursday of November? Mrs Holdsworth was puzzled, but agreed. Maybe it's his birthday, she thought. All this time, nothing had been decided about Fweddy. Mr Holdsworth asked Harry what he wanted to do, and Harry asked Madison, and Madison, surprisingly, had seemed quite happy with things the way they were. You can't just show Freddy the door, he said. The bird's happy here, and it's company for me, night times. And indeed, each night they perched side by side in the big parrot cage in the most companionable way. Harry would say good night on his way to bed, and Madison would answer sensibly. Fweddy, on the other hand, would either offer his usual apology or make some silly remark about the weather. But before long, he surprised Harry one evening by not only saying good night, but actually adding sweet dreams. You're teaching that bird a thing or two, aren't you, mad? Harry said the next morning at breakfast. Madison paused his spoonful of porridge sweetened with golden syrup halfway to his beak. He looked smug. You're going to be surprised one of these days, he said. But how do you communicate, asked Mr Holdsworth. I mean, it's not as though he can understand English like you. He's just picked up the odd sentence. It's simple if you think about it. I'm bilingual. What's that mean, Harry said. I speak two languages. What's the other one then? parrot. So what do you, so you think Fweddy's going to astonish us? Uh, uh, astonish us, do you, Mad? asked Mrs. Hosworth. Given time, ma'am, given time. How long, said Harry? A couple of weeks, I guess. You people at the back, you need to stop fiddling because you're disturbing me. A couple of weeks later, Mrs. Holdsworth looked at the calendar. It was Tuesday, November the 26th. And on the 28th, there was a ring around it to remind her that it was the fourth Thursday of the month. Mad, she called from the kitchen. Can you spare a minute? Sure, shouted Madison from over in the parrot's cage. His door was always wide open, but Fweddy seldom ventured out. And Madison, the family noticed, seemed quite happy to keep him company for long spells. They would chatter softly together in parrot language. About this feast, Mad, Harry's mother said when he arrived in the kitchen, you want it on the fourth Thursday. That's the day after tomorrow. We ought to be thinking about it. Oh, gee, ma'am, cried Madison. What with one thing and another, it went clean out of my head. Mighty glad you remembered. Is it your birthday? No, no, it's Thanksgiving Day. Oh, an American national holiday, isn't it? 
Yeah, to commemorate the first, the feast, the feast, the, oh, sorry, to commemorate the feast the Pilgrim Fathers had with the Indians at Plymouth County to celebrate their first harvest on American soil. I just thought it'd be kind of nice to celebrate my return home on that particular day. It would, said Mrs. Holdsworth. We will. So they began to plan the meal, the main part of which would be a roast turkey with cranberry sauce. When Thursday evening came and the Thanksgiving supper was almost ready, Madison came shuffling into the kitchen. We eaten in here, ma'am? We always eat in the kitchen, Madison, said Harry's mother. You know that. Sure, sure, it's just that, well, I kind of fweddy, I kind of figured Fweddy might like to come along. Seems kind of tough to be left in there while we're all having a good time in here. Of course, Mad, I'll lay a place for him. Madison went back into the sitting room where Harry and his father were playing a game. Supper nearly ready, Mr. Holdsworth asked. Yes, sir, Mrs. Holdsworth was kind enough to say Fweddy can come along too. Do you hear that, Fweddy, Harry said. You're invited to the Thanksgiving supper. Fweed, I'm not terribly hungry, said Fweddy. I must say, Mad, you've done wonders with that bird, said Harry's father. Madison scratched the side of his face. You ain't seen nothing yet, he said. At that moment, Mrs. Holdsworth called. Supper's ready. Come on, Fweddy, said Harry. There's lots of lovely things to eat. Cowy me, Harry, said Fweddy. I'm feeling fragile. <laughs> when they were all sitting down, Fweddy on a second tray beside Madison, Mr. Holdsworth poured a glass of wine for his wife and one for himself and a Coke for Harry. Now then, he said, Let's begin this splendid feast by giving thanks for the safe return of Harry's Mad. To Harry's Mad, they all cried, and then they fell to wo work with a will. Only Fweddy seemed to have no appetite. Fweddy, said Harry's mother, you're not eating anything. Tibbly sorry. But Harry and Mad, who both loved sweet things, but for Harry and Mad, who both loved sweet things, the best part of the meal was the Thanksgiving pudding, a great favourite of great uncle George's, for which Madison had supplied the recipe. It was full of figs and raisins and masses of brown sugar. At last everyone had finished eating and Mrs Holdsworth was just about to ask for help with the washing up when suddenly Fweddy, who had hardly spoken a word throughout but had simply sat looking rather uncomfortable on a tray, gave a kind of a grunt and stood up. And there, to the Holdsworth amazement, was a small glistening, pearly white, new laid egg. The three Holdsworths looked at Fweddy. They looked at the egg. They looked at Madison. Call me Fwedweeka, said Fweddy. <laughs> Call me Dad, said Harry's mad. <laughs>